returns to him void. So here is our program for today. Praise the Lord. A lot of things have happened in this world, but we're still here and we're going to have a, some music on our program. I'm going to be singing, Come and Dine. The Master calleth, Come and Dine. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people to come and dine. With his manna he doth feed and supplies their every need. Oh, it's great to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. Fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry, call them now. Come and dine. Oh, come and dine. The master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry, call them now. Come and die. The disciples came to land, thus obeying Christ's command. For oh, the Master called to them, Oh, come and die. There they found their heart's desire, bread and fish upon the fire. Thus he satisfies the hungry every time. Oh, come and die. The Master called them, Come and die. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry call it now, come and dine. Oh, come and dine, the master called it, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude Turn the water into wine To the hungry call it now Come and die Soon the Lamb will take his bride To be ever at his side All the hosts of heaven Will assemble me What will be a glorious sight All the saints in spotless white And with Jesus we will feast eternally Oh, come and dine, the master called him, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude, turned the water into wine. To the hungry call him now, come and dine. Oh, come and dine, the master called him, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. The hungry call is now come and die. Amen. All right, praise the Lord.
Lord, we are going to have something a little bit unusual on the program today. I'm going to have uh, three different psalms being read. It'll be Psalms 82, 83, and 84 that are going to be read for you right now. Uh, maybe a new part of our program. Psalm 82, a psalm of Asaph. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Psalm 83, a song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assur also is joined with them. They have holpen the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the brook of Chisum, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeeb, yea, all their princes as Zeba and as Almana, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. O oh my God, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth up mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the Most High over all the earth. Psalm 84 To the chief musician upon Giddith, a psalm for the sons of Korah. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Praise the Lord. Uh... Amen. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Uh, I got saved some 47 years ago. I just worked it out. I, I, uh, 
I was saved in 1977 and uh, I was thinking earlier praying about the program today and uh, I got thinking I can prove God to myself I can prove that he is and because of all the things he has done for me over these years like I say 47 years ago I got saved and I certainly remember April the 7th 1977 when I got uh, saved born again I uh, never had an experience like that before uh, not never exactly the same since I've had many wonderful experiences and, and great experiences in God but so many things like that and uh, that uh, well, that was April 7th and in June I was filled with the Holy Ghost that was another great experience uh, you that are Pentecostal or familiar with the Pentecostal ways may understand that uh, but I, I can prove God to myself because he's a personal God but I wondered you know how is it so hard today especially to prove that God exists and indeed to the scientists the so-called uh, uh, educated of this world it's almost impossible to prove that God exists unless you're a follower uh, of, of, of his word if you follow his word if you look and uh, you'll see in the word of God that things are coming to pass that God said would come to pass uh, there, there's a wickedness in the world uh, the Lord said that offenses must come uh, but woe unto them by whom they come it's in the book of Luke and uh, all these things are happening and you you know that there must be a falling away perhaps you've heard that preached and all these things uh, the wickedness of man uh, there's something in the Word of God that talks about the uh, transgressors coming to their full you know and it seems like they're getting worse and worse the sinners of this world those that hate Christians that hate actually uh, telling the world that they hate us they hate Christians and they're they're against Israel they're against anything good they're against the the country they say the American flag is a a racist symbol somehow and uh, it's against uh, everything and it makes them afraid or something maybe they ought to be afraid if that be the case but uh, all these things happening in this world uh, and it's all recorded in the Word of God how it would get evil and and uh, many would go to and fro uh, and knowledge would be increased all these things are happening today and uh, and yet people go on and they don't understand and they uh, they haven't turned to God with their whole heart and uh, it reminds me of the old song they used to sing uh, you've got to cross that lonesome valley You've got to walk it by yourself. Ain't nobody here can walk it for you. You've got to walk it by yourself. I've got a few of the words of that song here. I was going to try and sing it, but I don't have the correct <laughs> music to go along with it. Uh, it says, you got to walk that lonesome valley. you got to walk it by yourself. Nobody here can walk it for you you got to walk it by yourself. Daniel was a Bible hero, was a prophet brave and true. In a den of hungry lions, he proved what faith can do for you. There's a great road that leads to glory through a valley far away. Nobody else can walk it for you. They can only point the way. Mommy and Daddy loves you dearly, sister does, and brother too. They may beg you to go with them, but they can o but they cannot go for you. I'm going to walk that lonesome valley. I'm going to walk it by myself. Don't want nobody to walk it for me. I'm going to walk it by myself. And that seems to be the way it is. We've got to do this for ourselves. You've got to do it for yourself. You, If you don't know God today, you're in a wonderful position to... to to uh, realize his his reality 
uh, to come to him and find out how real and how wonderful he is. Uh, like I said, it's been 47 years now, and I was a, I was losing a house when I got saved. I had 10 acres of land in Michigan, and I was losing the, the house. I, I had the 10 acres. I had a house built. I had a mortgage on the house, but I, uh, my work ended. Uh, I was laid off, and there was no work to be done. It was back in 77. And, uh, and so I ended up uh, losing the house. But in, in the process of lo losing the house, I found the Lord. You know, I have a house prepared. Now, I've got that house. I've got a, a mansion over the hilltop. I love to sing that song. Uh, that I've got that for me. And I'm going to read the 23rd Psalm, talking about going through a valley. We've all got to go through that valley one day. Uh, and it's the Psalm of David, Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, I've found that to be true uh, ever since the Lord has been my shepherd. Now, 47 years, and many of you are not quite 47 years old, uh, I'm uh, I'm 77, so I was 30 when I got saved, and I've been serving the Lord and been saved longer than I was lost, so I thank God for that. But he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you've got faith in God, if you believe in God, and you've surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus, you don't have to worry about wanting things. Since I've been saved... Uh, people have offered me jobs. I, I'm retired now, and I have everything I need, everything I want. I've got it. Uh, I, I I don't want. As like it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That, in other words, he's, he provides for my food. Here, perhaps we could say spiritual food as well as our uh, our carnal food for the body. And he leadeth me beside the still waters, refreshing. He, he'll refresh you from time to time. He'll lead you beside those still waters. You can take a nice cool drink any time you want. It says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, he doesn't do it... Uh, uh, for us uh, to make us some big thing or something like that. He does it for his own name's sake. He said he would do it in the word. He said he would save. He said that all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And all you got to do is call upon his name and he will save you. And it says he restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He will lead you in right paths. And it's a wonderful thing to turn from iniquity and to seek those right paths, the good path, the way of holiness. And it does it for his name's sake, that he might be glorified, that we can love one another as Christians, we can serve him, and the world will see that, and they'll just be dumbfounded at how we love one another, and they'll wonder what in the world has got a hold of those people. But we know, we know what has got a hold of us. You know, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And there we are back to our valley again. You know, we've all got to walk that lonesome valley it talks about. Uh, one day we're going to face death. One day we're going to leave this world. And we often uh, hear this psalm uh, recited at funerals. Just about every funeral I've been to, they've, they've mentioned Psalm 23 it'll be printed somewhere in the in the literature uh, it says yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil you know my heart stopped back oh it was 2013 2013 my heart stopped here at the house I, I had heart condition uh, I, I uh, my heart I, I had a terrible heart attack it was the worst pain I'd ever had and my heart stopped but uh, we, we talk about going through that uh, ch the chilly waters uh, of death you know but there was no chilly water you know I, I, I my heart stopped I knew 
I couldn't go anywhere. I was laying on the bed. I flopped down on the bed, and I laid there. And, I, and, and the great thing about it was there was no more pain in my chest where my heart was, was, it was hurting and, and I was having a heart attack. All the pain left me. But then uh, the Lord decided that I should stay on. And I'm, I'm back here. It's 2024, still kicking. I ended up having a four-way bypass. Uh, later on, I, uh, my heart started going again. The Lord did it. Uh, there was nobody here. I was alone in the house. The Lord had to do it. He's proved himself so many times over and over. But here I am back again, and all the pain is back. And I drove myself to the emergency room myself. I was taking uh, the nitro tabs and aspirin. I was doing all that. And I got halfway pretty pretty decent, you know, even after my heart had stopped and, and started going again. And so I went through a phase there where I had the four-way bypass and recovered from all that. And uh, it's just been the Lord. Though I walked through that valley of the shadow of death. But like I say, when I did have my heart stop, maybe you would say I didn't really die. I don't remember ever losing consciousness. I was conscious the whole time I was on the bed. Just I think my heart had stopped. And it started going again. And all the pain came back. Uh, but he says, though I walk through that valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that is the main thing, not to fear anything uh, in death. You know, if I go through death again, which which I will, unless the Lord comes and, and takes us uh, out of here in the rapture, I'll have to go through that again. But I've been there one time, and I'm, I'm not afraid of it. Uh, it's not as bad as what I thought. It's not as bad as what I thought it would be. You know, I, he says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That is the key. Him being with you is the key for that. And thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He's got a way to protect you from any danger, any trouble, any evil. You know, after you pass this world, uh, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You know, that the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I think the thing that hurts him the most, the thing that really causes the devil uh, just to, just agony, is to see somebody, uh, a Christian, being blessed, uh, having, uh, like the, the scripture says, the table before me, all prepared before me, having a nice sumptuous meal. Maybe it's a spiritual meal, but we can enjoy God and we can be in his presence and uh, and have that all in his presence, in the presence of mine enemies. You know, the devil has to sit there and watch, you know, where well, we're being blessed. And I think that just tears him up. It just tears him up like a dog on a chain. You know, he, he wants to, to get at us and, and bite us and do whatever he can. But he can't. Here's a table of food and good things prepared before us in the presence of our enemies you know all the enemies it's plural there uh it says thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over you know it surely does you know god can bless you where your cup will run over and like i say i can prove god to myself uh, even in paying tithes i do pay tithes of all that i have uh, i even i get some food stamps uh, that i get uh, I get uh, other benefits and I, I take that benefit that I get and I get a tithe of that and I pay it back to the church and, and my social security I, I pay a tithe of that and I still uh, give offerings all the time uh, I'm always every week I give offerings in the church and I try to do my best that way and since I've been doing that and which has been quite uh, well all my life just about uh, since especially since uh, 77 even before that I did pay tithes the church I was going to but uh, it, it proves that he's real you know you have to put your uh, mouth where your money is or put your money where your mouth is I guess is the way to say it uh, you believe in God do you believe him enough to pay tithes are you paying tithes of all that you have and are you paying 
offerings, or are you afraid to do that? If, if you say, I can't afford to pay tithes, well, do you believe in God at all? Do you believe He's real? If you do, you'll pay real money in your tithes. Uh, you get real with God, you'll pay real money in real tithes somewhere uh, to the church, uh, whatever uh, good Bible-believing church you go to. Uh, you pay tithes there, and uh, and God will bless you. That's one place in the Bible, Malachi. He says, prove me now, you know, uh, if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to receive hardly you know, if you'll pay your tithes and, and serve him. Amen. Glory to God. You, uh, he anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of of the Lord forever. Like I said, uh, I've got a mansion over the hilltop, and I'm waiting one day to enter into that place. I, I lost 10 acres of land. I, I lost a three-bedroom house. I had three bedrooms in there mostly. Uh, it was just me uh, at the time, but I was prepared to have a life there. I was going to be a farmer, but uh, I gave it all up for him. I, I said, Lord, if you have to take this back, it's all right, as long as I'm saved. Uh, I was so happy to be born again, and the Lord uh, just had to lay me on my back, so to speak, that I could look up, uh, and I got saved. I praise God for that. I thank God for His salvation. I've proved God over and over in tithing and in serving Him and uh, running into trouble, and He getting me out and failing Him at times, but He got me back on my feet. And he's encouraged me every time. He's always there to help me. Uh, he's never failed me in the 47 years. I think that's quite a record myself. I think it's very good. He's told me uh, where to go to church at times. It, from time to time, he said, well, I want you to go here, or I want you to go there. And I've done that, and I've been blessed. The Lord even said uh, when he was washing the saints' feet, he said, uh, if you know to do these things, happy are ye if you do them. You know, those things that he tells us to do, to, to love one another, to wash one another's feet when we have communion. So many things like that. And, and to uh, to be faithful to, to the church, be faithful to the brethren, to love the brethren. And he said, thereby shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another. And that word of God, every promise in that book is for us today. God watches over his word to fulfill it. Every single thing that he said, I can prove it to me. Can I prove it to you? You'll have to prove it for yourself. You've got to walk that lonesome valley. You've got to walk it by yourself. This has been the Amen Corner radio program with Dave Moran. This program is on the air each Saturday from 10.30 to 11. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're looking for a home church or a church that to visit, come to our services here at Arbor Light Holiness Church on Highway 42 East, just about two miles from Wilson on the left-hand side just past Tarts Mill Road. Sunday service is at 10.30 a.m. and evening service is at 6 p.m. Our midweek service is at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays so you can come and visit. Brother Irvin Lewis is our pastor. He'll be very happy to see you there.